Today we take up the very first chapter of Quran. We take up the very first chapter of Quran, the first verse. All praise be to Allah, the God of the worlds, the God of the universes, the God of the space, from which uh, the entire material things have developed. All material things have developed from nothingness. Nothingness in the sense from the point of our knowledge. We know nothing unless we are inspired. We know nothing unless we hear something from others or see something. And by the tactile feeling, I know there is air. And by the smell, I know there is a scent. There is a flavor. So by five special senses, I come to know of existing things. Who created these sensations for a purpose that you shall understand I have created ears for the hearing and the eyes for the vision. First thing you hear, you understand is from the hearing. The moment you are born in this world, you listen to the sounds only. You cannot see, identify things. You listen to the sounds. Then after one month or so, you begin to see things. Until such time, our ears are opened up. Listen to everything that is in the sound form and thereafter see if it is existing through the vision. If the vision is given first, you will be failing to hear anything. If the hearing comes first, then you are understanding whatever you heard is existing. Somebody is speaking, some sounds are coming, the child doesn't see. After that, it begins to see the movements of the lips, the facial expressions later on, when it comes to understand things of the mood of the mother or father, then it begins to understand. So the understanding, every part when it comes into existence, what is first and what is later, you will try to grasp. What is first is hearing, what comes later is the touch and what comes later is the vision. So the touch and hearing and touch, all these three sensations definitely gives us the evidence that materials are existing. Invisible materials are there, visible materials are there, both are materials. All these materials, whether invisible or non-invisible, is only a sign. There are things that you cannot see, there are things that you cannot hear, there are things that you cannot feel, but it is there. So who has created the five senses, special senses, and for what purpose? To understand and discern things that you know and you don't know. You can see and you cannot see, you can feel and you cannot feel. Everything is existing. Just because you don't see, it doesn't mean that it is not existing. Just because your five senses does not uh, perceive, doesn't mean things are not existing. Things are in the offing. Things are developing also before it materializes into something. So when he intended the five senses for you, he has created long before that these five senses are telltale signs of the existence of things created from nothingness. Everything is created, everything is being created and it is there in the space well scattered and it is hidden in the thin air. We understand that God exists in no form and shape and in nothingness. He is all pervasive. His power is all pervasive. You will understand this moment that things are not in our way but things are happening in His way. But 
if you wish for it and your wish goes to him things are happening for you specifically and things come to you if you are believing in nothingness then you will believing you will be believing in god everything comes to us as our life from nothingness we are breathing in our air we do not know how the air will be physically materially but we know there is but whatever we know it is not true what we do not know it is true why we know air is necessary for our survival for our life to continue but what is there in the life no one knows what is there in the air you know i know you have your body you have eyes nose yes everything is there but it is not functioning there's a dead body it is there but it is not life life is important or the body is important we are understanding by his order you should understand things and you will not idolize anything idolizing means anything that has a material but no life in it that is idol the life means only we have the life the man has the life the human beings have the life not any other thing what you know as life is what you understand what you perceive what you gather apart from what you materially feel so what is life now that makes me grow physically or mentally mind wise i must be growing the more i am able to understand the more i am able to get at things the hidden aspect of anything that means i am growing maturing the real growth is the maturing of mind if the mind doesn't mature if you are a kid anybody will tell you he is kiddish he has not grown in mind his mental acumen is very low his iq is not up to mark and he is mentally retarded so these are the words that we use to indicate that they are not yet a human being being is most important human being is important not the presence human presence physically is important that being is most important most valuable that makes us feel that i am alive i am still alive that makes me feel i am alive so the life is unseen the life force is unseen the growth factors in the life force is unseen and what makes this life force specifically for human being is unseen you are to be a believer in the unseen god has created that distinction in your heart in your chest god has given you the lead by way of his signs to understand your heart whatever you feel whatever you see and these are five special senses because they are specific in their purpose to learn the entire universal forces acting on us the universal forces are still surviving us so what knowledge you possess now of the material things the documented things the theories get to be proved if at all you have a knowledge to prove that you definitely have the worth of that knowledge then you must bring forth your life force and create a new origination that has their life force in its fullest capacity as you are or as a mosquito or even lower organism than that a single cellular organism that has the life create 
create a bacteria, create a virus. See if it is possible for you. If it is not possible for you, then you understand that you are created, you are alive today, you are living for tomorrow because he is the creator, he is the nourisher, he is the savior, he is promoting you towards a better standard. Every day you are created to a better standard in your life. Not a single moment would be wasted. So what do you think about your eyes now? It just sees or it wants to learn something from what they see. We have to learn something from what I see. What, you, what we all see things, we have to learn something from it. First thing we will learn is, the moment everything is created, it is progressing towards its death. There is no way that it is being elevated to a higher rank. The moment we are born, we have full inspiration in us, intuited in our hearts that we know everything by way of intuition and inspiration, not by way of someone instituting anything into us. When somebody tutors you materially, then you have gone the wrong way. When somebody inspires you non-materially, then your mind is growing. So believe in the growth of the mind. Don't believe in the form and shape of your thing. Anything that you see on this earth is towards its decline, progressing towards its decline. Everything is deathward. Whatever you understand materially will take you deathward only. It will not lift you up to your higher standards. So say all glory be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, who has created human being with the five senses. The sense means to be perceived, not to be tactile, not to be materially appreciated. It has to be perceived. In every aspect, the senses must perceive things. It should not idolize things. It must have life force in it to appreciate it. If it doesn't have life force, nothing to appreciate. All your inventions are without a life force. So there's nothing to appreciate of your standards in life. However great may be your inventions, all death were destructive elements, including an atom. It cannot give you life, but it will make the world extinct in no time. But then don't think that is the end of the world, the world will be newly created without you, with a being much better than you. That you must understand. They can destroy the world, they say, but they must know they are, not that they are destroying the world, they are destroying the earth. They are destroying the surface of the earth. This happens regularly when the famine strikes the earth, when there is flood, when there is an earthquake. So many catastrophes do occur on the surface of the earth, wiping out the living beings. It is not that you are dropping an atom bomb and then you are making the world extinct. The world means the earth and the heavens together. Without heavens, there is no earth. The earth is created from nothingness. The earth is created from nothingness, no materials. If you see, there is a material like food, we take in the food and the entire food is eliminated as fecal matter, but the energy, life energy is absorbed. Likewise, air and water also. The bulk quantity consumed is removed. Whether it is water, liquid or air or solid, everything is removed, but the life energy is grasped. When you see something as food, you must see the life energy in it, that is the constructive energy in it or the destructive force in it. Your senses will give you the appreciation whether it is good for you or bad for you. 
This is the sense that culminates in one's heart, that focus down to one's heart, where assimilation process goes, thinking develops so that you gain the truth out of it. Live by the truth, don't live by the falsehood of your senses separately. I see is one thing, yes, hear something, something tactile feel I have, some scent I have, some taste I have. They are separate, but it must culminate. Each and everything, all these uh, five senses must be fed if it is to be livelier for you by the day. Every single sense must be appreciating everything that is present in and around you, above you or below you, wherever you are, the five special senses must be active and anything that gives credence, feeds these five special senses, then there is something for you in it. Otherwise, they are your slaves. You can make use of it to your purpose and throw it away as disposable things. Take for example, a human, an animal, what does it have for you? How does these five special senses are fed? When you go to an animal, it stinks. It must have the sense to cleanse itself. It doesn't know. You may clean it, that's different. And keep it close to you. But the animals cannot clean themselves. So that uncleanness gives a, a smell that is uh, torpid. A smell that is uh, unwanted. Your sense says, the scent says is unwanted. The more it stinks, the more it is unclean, keep it away. But you seem to love animals. It may be a parrot, it may be so beautiful to look, but it cannot clean itself. So there is an untold uncleanliness there. The leaves are there, it is lively. The leaves. I am coming down to the vegetation level. The leaves are there, but it is clean. He has made it for your purpose. The scent is good. The fragrance is good of the tree. And for the look it is good. And it produces fruits for you. The fruits are good for you. And if that fruit is not ripening and it is uh, sour in taste or bitter in taste, then the whole tree is not wanted place. I see everything wholesomely. We have to take everything wholesomely. Even if there is not a fruit, it is not for us. If there is not a flower, there is not, that, that vegetation is not for us. If it is of no use, it must be extinct. Almost all the gardens that you have here, they have nothing for you to provide you. It is useless for you. Whatever is useful for you, it will be grown by the heavens. So the earth will not receive the rain. It will become barren in no time. All the trees will be dying down for want of uh, its life force. Because it doesn't feed you, because it is useless to you, it is not to be grown. So the heavenly water will not come. Even if it comes, it comes in a tempest, fury that destroys all the trees, all the vegetations, all the producers, everything is destroyed because of the floods and because of the tempest fury. What will you appreciate now on this earth? See now, all glory be to Allah, the God of the worlds. The very first sentence of Quran, chapter 1, the first sentence, all glory be to Him. Nothing for you to appreciate yourself. Appreciate godliness in you. Who has created the five senses? It is called the senses. It is not the material. Your eye is not important. The sense in the eyes is important. Likewise, the rest of the senses. What you perceive, what you learn, 
how you grow mentally using these senses is important all these senses are in oneness when it comes to heart when i see something my heart says good or evil likewise every sense is culminating in the heart and there you are discerning ability should awaken you should be warning you should be giving you good news about uh, what is about you whether it is evil or it is good for you those things will teach you if only your senses are intact with the heart let it not be separated then all these five senses will be separate not as a single entity but it is one if i see you my the cleanliness i am appreciating i don't have to come near to you and then smell you your ugliness is sufficient for me so only when the bad smell only the nose can appreciate it how can my eyes can also appreciate whether you will be stinking when i come near to you or not you have fallen on the dust or some uh, gutter i don't have to come near to you and then smell i know already so every sense has all the senses intact when i have my eyesight alone that sense have all the five senses the elements of all the five senses are there when i hear also the elements of all the five senses are there when they talk dirty i know that it is smelling stink this becomes a figurative speech then don't assume but understand for sure you have the criteria in you to distinguish between good and bad how will you appreciate god now all glory be to him without another thought i say all glory be to him so without a material i can understand things if i can smell without coming near to you if i can smell the talk is evil and stinking i can understand from nothingness things are being created there is no nothingness at all but everything is there when i think of someone else also in a warm manner then he is kept warm all all the way when i think evil of someone he may be suffering if he is due for the reward but god says always do good things and your mind will say yes let us do good things only the good will return will be returned to me as a favor if you do evil then may heart suffers coming to the abstract things now i am speaking to you calmly and i create some sense of serenity if i speak harshly and shout like and ask then it disturbs your mind i am speaking calmly now okay whether it strengthens my energy or not while seeing you all very calm quiet composed and then receiving and full of energy you are having something in mind that uh, there is a lot more to grasp than what we have understood read as knowledge and intuited instituted by the people in the institutions and the colleges schools this is something really different distinct so something is there my mind is now gearing up to receive that energy the mind energy is most important than the physical energy give thought to your mind that accentuates your mind capacity thereafter the physical being is uh, strengthened automatically don't give importance to the physical things give importance to the unseen forces acting on you above all this unseen forces the one force acting on you is the still live in you is the is the grasping ability of the unseen things to the best use of yourself i am speaking to you calmly that gives sense of relief to you i am speaking to you harshly that doesn't give sense of relief to you 
if I shout my energy is wasted or not. That shouting is because of my mood changes or not. I am not in a good mood. That saps up my energy. You don't have to shout. You may be depressed. I am some person is quiet and calm, but he is uh, full of uh, energy because of his perceptive ability. Some other person is very depressed. He is also calm, but for him, all the five special senses are not acting. So his mind is not calmed down. If my mind has to calm down, then I must understand from what I perceive of things. If I am not able to perceive of things, there is no good and bad I am able to differentiate. So my mind is in turbulence, in total turmoil and chaos. I will not be feeling as beautiful as another person who has the ability to understand. And he grasps the good one and eliminates the evil one from the heart level, not physically. If you are an evil person, then I know that you are evil. I try to impart good by not having enmity against you, by not showing any hatred against you, because I have a feeling here now that if I have the strength to perceive things, I have strength to impart that perception to other people also by way of my mental caliber, by way of my mind strength. You are angry at me, for instance, I am calm. What will you think of me? You will be even more angered or you will start thinking why this person is not reacting to me. That sets in motion the understanding ability. At the same time, I am prayerful. Not only I am calm, I not only I am being patient and enduring, but I avert all those things and see good things in you. So I begin to say things that will calm you down. And even before that, you are ready to accept whatever I am saying because of my stature, because of my status. Stature is important than status. You know that I will not harm you, but somebody has instigated you against me telling false things about me. That may be having some effect on you. I am an evil person. I can do any harm to you, but it is not so. Somebody will see me as a Muslim and people know that the Muslims are evil. So a person who doesn't know about me may come to me with some harsh attitude, some evil intention. But as he begins to talk to me, then he understands I am more saner than how he thought about me. Even before receiving him, even before he sees me, he understands that something is different with him. He is not the one like uh, how I have uh, uh, understood about the entire community, no. So who is God now? The unseen, mighty power that has the ability to originate what it wills. And that origin is there in your heart, in the best of his creations, the human being. And he delivers to your mind as to your requirements and as to your wish and need. You believe and thereafter you start understanding what that godliness is and how it should come all your life with you in ever promising manner and in ever prosperous manner it must be enlivingly active before you growing in plentiful to your eyes so that your eyes are comforted your hearts are comforted the whole universal gamut is created for you to think where from it came and why it came. The more you ask questions where from it came and why it came, then your dimensions are greater now. And it is easy for you to pick and choose what you want from the greater aspect, from a greater resolution. If I am hard hearted, I am consumed first of my energy, let alone my, act my actions and reactions bothering others. 
if i am soft spoken and soft hearted then my energy is doubled as i am speaking to others if i am hard hearted then whatever i am yelling will first affect consume my energy and consume others energy also this is evil if i don't expect anything from you and it is not that just i am constraining myself but understanding that you are unable to keep up yourself first everybody is falling short of their own requirements everybody is handicapped in their own way i am handicapped in my own way mentally and that reflects in your physical life you are constrained the physical life because if you are given enormous wealth when your mind is constrained it is of no use it will overspill and it will cause enmity against one another first enmity is the envy whatever i have gained above my capacity in plentiful is definitely a bother to me this botheration must go don't aim what is given to you is is far less and i have to earn more and more all the materials of this world you like you want that has got your pleasure physical pleasure without any mental comfort mental comfort is most important for a human being then going for physical pleasures five senses individually don't go for it take hold somebody all these five senses senses must be fed at any point of time who has created you all these things my eye has got all the five senses my touch has got all the five senses suppose there is a food how do we know that it is spoiled or not i know the texture of food by closing the eyes i just uh, feel my food the texture of it will make me understand that it is spoiled it will be not good to smelling it will not be fitting to my taste everything has got all the five senses together anything you want you can increase it if my eyes have got the smell sense then while seeing the person while seeing any material i can increase the smell sense more than the eye sense i smell something nasty i will say i smell something evil i will say all these speeches are created by him but only after the grammar everything all this nonsense came things have changed materially otherwise we have got beautiful speech god created god intuited speech that is lovely to hear but nowadays what we speak is a deadly language it has got no smell no taste no touch nothing except uh, the uh, the pride and the insolence we now say all glory be to you the the originator then the creator in the likeness he creates what he originated i am being created every moment in the likeness of i am originally created so i am edging towards moving towards my creator my originator so that i am created all and you and i am progressing, progressing towards the origination beginning origin means beginning a human species originated from the clay thereafter male and female union produced the creations so origination is one thing the creation from a source we are cre- being created first human creation has cropped up from the earth so every earth has got different energy in it so according to the nature of the earth one area they are taller in another area they are shorter in another area they are dark in another area they are so strong in another area so feeble in another area they are, they are dwarfed so in one go first creation of human being is the cropping up from the earth all over the world 
Later on, the male and females unions produce a different kind that is creation. So, origination and creation move towards the origination by creating yourself all in you. From anything, you can do anything. We have seen enough of uh, how one can improve the unseen forces. By texture, I can improve my smell sense. I can improve my taste sense just by texture. It is not good for me. Smell will be bad. Definitely, it won't taste good. So in everything, you can increase what sense you want. In everything, all the senses are together. So there are no five different senses. There is one sense if you have the heart to perceive, discern, think, ponder, and then arrive at the truth. Say all glory be to Allah, the God of the worlds. This is the first sentence. So this is from God. The very moment we are off, off the ground level to the highest sphere which is originated and created. We go to the origination then move on to space where there, into your senses there is nothingness. But if these five senses culminate together then you will understand everything is there. There is no nothingness like. What has been materialized is nothing to us now. So the idol worshipping, idol, idolizing things and believing only in the materials shall not be our life. God sends down everything in abstractness. Beautiful message. Live forever lively. And you are going to live forever in the eternal longevity. But you think about the material. I will die up to 100 years or maximum. I can die up to 100. I can live up to 100 years. This is your brain that works individually to the material senses that you are using. The material senses, eyes will see, that's it. Nothing it will understand. Likewise, all the other senses, it will feel but it will not understand anything. I am dead already. With our body, if there is no criterion acting in us, if there is no distinguishing, I am already dead. There is no point in living. Because you are idol worshippers. You are beautifying your eyes, you are making up your skin, shaving off your hairs, and making it beautiful. Let there be all those things, but you are idolizing your own senses. While it is livelier and lovelier, it has to grow by that every moment. We are not putting them to use. The mind must work. The mind says something is there. What is there? Everything is there. All that are in the space, it is there in the mind. So let there be spaciousness of your chest. This is a treasure chest, not an ordinary chest. The whole universe and beyond and the space and beyond from wherever it is created, it is there in the heart. Say now all glory be to Allah, the God of the worlds. This is the scripture. This is what is inscribed in your mind from which there is no escape for you. Finally, when the death arrives and all things come <coughs> shrouding you, then you will understand why this happens. Only now you begin to live as a human being. Unless so many things surround you, encompassing you, from every direction you see only the death, then your heart will wake up. Don't proceed to that level. Don't restrict yourself to that corner. Come out into the space. Oh Allah, now you say, Oh Allah. The Allah means you have three 
word there. Allahu. Al means the particular thing, the. La means none. Who means him, the none but him. Total surrender. There is no one but you who can make me live on this earth. Who can make me live in this planet? Who can make me live in the skies and in the earth together? Who can make me live in the space with spaciousness of mind? So there's no restrictions for me. Who can speak this to you other than Allah? Normally people, they only worship the sound called Allah. Like the Hindus, they're sounding like Om. Oh, they say Allah, only they know the sound, nothing more about Allah. So there's no difference between the Muslim and Hindus and people who say God, 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 there's no difference at all between any of them. They only have split away from a single mental elegance to dissipated, decimated filth. They are the people who have dispersed, scattered from one single being to multiple groups and uh, sections and tribes. Never follow the people when they have scattered as a distinct and different uh, tribe altogether, different sect altogether, different community altogether. This communalization should not be there and we will not support any community if they think that they are different from the from, from a human being. They should not consider themselves as a Hindu, Muslim or Christian. They must consider as a human being. When you say human being, we have not heard of Hindu human being, Muslim human being. A Muslim human, Hindu human also we will not say. Only when you say you are a man, when you, when you, when you, when you consider as a statue, a lifeless statue, when you become an idol, then you become a Hindu, Muslim or Christian. Where is the question of mind now? Mind has got any link to the uh, communal, communal activities that you have, the communal understanding. According to the communal uh, uh, aspect, can you differentiate the mind into Muslim, Hindu or Christians? Cannot. A human being is uh, yeah, being a product of his mind all the way. He is being created out of his mind. Whether it is good or evil, there are two things. There are no third categories. But there are fourth and fifth and sixth, seventh categories. Umpteenth number of categories. We have created among ourselves. We have separated among ourselves as distinctly different from each other. So, God says, I have created you as a single nation, but you scattered away as not being a human being. You scattered away as declaring that you are no more a human being. So, they are far away from the embrace of the God. They have distinctly detached themselves away from godliness. They have become unholy. We will have no truck with them, whoever calls himself as Muslim, Christians, Hindus. Listen to what God says into, to your heart. You are one or you are different from the other people. I am asking a Hindu, I am asking a Muslim, you are one by nature or different. What they will say? By nature of mind you are same or different. You have got eyes that has, that has the perception capacity. You have the ears that has the learning capacity. You have the tactile simulation that the senses receive everything in the perfect manner as someone else receives. In what way you are different? Come out clearly and say, all these three nonsense groups I am speaking, speaking to, let them clarify themselves how they are different, each of them is, uh, is different from the other person, other community. There is no difference at all. Then how come you got separated? <coughs> no answer at all. I am saying, are you dead or alive? That you are keeping mum without answering to any of the questions. You are dead. If you are a human being, you can answer. 
we are in the dead community deadly community if we are a part of them we are living in the graves already we have no more life don't brood over your life why your life in is in such a low level you are lower than low below the ground in the coffins dead you cannot think about coming alive unless your heart comes together with the oneness of human nation so now we say glory be to allah the none but him fall prostrated by mind not by your body before him and submit yourself to him that i want the perception that is your first prayer oh god give me perception oh god make my criterion alive let my heart become become functional let it did not be sleeping even while i am dreaming day dreaming or night dreaming sleep dreaming or wakeful dreaming i must be alive with all my senses together that is well entrenched in my heart the heart is the space and the space is what you have originated and it is endless i am living already endlessly you are not a man of body but you are a man of mind and the mind has a body different to that of your physical body while i am sleeping i am drifting into my dreams same body but it is different not tactile body not a material one but it is different people will see you you are lying down on the bed that body the, the body is there but i am bodily elsewhere unless and such time i am woken up instantly everything joins together and i am wakeful to my physical body i shall say i was elsewhere in the space how come the moment i am opening my eyes i am here when you close your eyes you must be in the space when you open up your eyes you must have come down from the space to see the world how it is how many times in a day you are winking closing and opening at the same time as you are living is so fast that you are living in the space as well as you are living in the earth you are living abstractly as as, as well as you are living materially that abstract has the power this does not have the power material does not have the power that abstractness has the endless absorbing capacity it is disrobing capacity nothing else <coughs> where are we now we are nakedly filth as long as i am seeing through this eyes i am done with adornments when i am closing and i am living in the space sensing all the five senses in one place that is in my mind level in my heart level this is the first verse of the quran the scripture which has been sent down upon your heart with all its uh, blessings and uh, wisdom intact into your heart the more you think the more you are living with the closed eyes the more you don't give importance to that means the more you don't give importance to the physical senses you are alive in the space forever with the same body do we understand this yes so in the name of allah remember him more who will give you that perception and appreciation who will improve you and increase you in that perception who will make you live forever even as you are counting your days counting down your days from the birth you are not vitiated mind wise you will be alive so we are now coming to life with the first verse alhamdulillah rabbil alamin all glory be to allah the one and only not to be seen but to be perceived that perception is there in the heart and god is with you the moment you wish for the perception the moment you go for the perception 
the moment you start pondering the moment you start asking questions why how what when and where the moment you ask your questions inside he is the one who is delivering the revelation to you that revelation is uh, unsurpassable there is no further to it that is the end because it has become abstract with the oneness of godliness and it has become abstract with the space which has got all the capacities all the abilities all encompassing appreciation and you are on top of the worlds with the creator with the originator this is what is expected of you if you want to be a human being by the god almighty so here ends the first session the first verse of the quran allah the lord of the worlds all glory be to him and none but him to be glorified on this earth on this entire spacious universal atmosphere so any questions now from you concerning whatever you have heard are any doubts are i feel something so many things have to be pondered there is no way that i can open my mouth and ask any questions now because everything is abstract it has been fed to you now you will be asking questions deep within you and allah is revealing that's a revelation the scripture upon the scriptures as is coming out from deep within the answers coming as they come out your whole nature is changed your physical nature is changed to the abstract nature now you will know who you are now you will know what godliness is when i am asking you what the questions that you may have immediately you are not able to answer that means god gives you time go home and think i will answer you don't ask from him anyway i am here to answer you because i am in the oneness i may be able to answer you that will give some prompt to your already existing lurking questions deep inside of you I am already living in abstractness. Yes. My mind is uh, what is commanding me to do this and that. My mind is what is instituting in me that you require this tomorrow. You require your health tomorrow. You should not fall in ill health. All those things are not to be seen but to be perceived. Your, your identity is still in the abstractness. I am seeing you calm because your mind is calm. That calmness I cannot see. I am seeing its reflection on your face. You are not perplexed with whatever you are hearing. You are still composed. So I know I have not confused anyone. That abstractness is I am still seeing in you. And you are not uh, 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 confused about your question. You are clear about your questions, which anybody will ask. Still you are composed. That composure is reflecting by way of your expression. You are an abstract. You think first and then speak. That speech is not as good as what you thought inside. Language falls short of your expressions. Still you are abstract. You are not in physical form. You are in abstract. Total abstractness. I will not say abstract form. Total abstract, uh, abstractness. Now you are able to understand. Still you have questions. Put forth your questions. Experience is abstract. Experiencing here is more important than experiencing through the feel, experiencing through the smell and taste. Beyond that, there is something tells you that this is it, that is, this is wrong, this is right. And wrong and right are abstractness. If I am envying you in abstractness, I am doing harm to myself as well as to yourself. In my planning and plotting, everything is abstract going on inside. I may not be executed in the way that I wanted to execute it. 
I am falling short of my plans when it comes to execution. This is where God's help comes. Not able to execute in the way I have planned, that means God's providence has come upon the person whom, upon whom you wanted to exert your envy by way of physical assault. Tell me where we are uh, physical without abstractness. It is only a material that uh, submits to your command. That command is abstract. And you are not able to do it in full form. That's where God's help comes. If you execute it in full form, then you will be destroyed. I don't like you, but I should not show it out. If I show, then I will earn more enemies around me. I will be extinct in no time. Tell me one uh, example that you are living uh, materially without abstractness governing you. Where are you going before you are, uh, your mind commanding you to go? You are going somewhere, you are saying. Where are you going? Aimlessly you are wandering, you are going with, with a purpose. That purpose is abstract. You want something good. You go and buy certain things and come home, it is not good. What will you do? That abstractness says that you have wasted your time, wasted your money, wasted your energy. That person has cheated you. All these things are abstract. But before even being cheated, we must know that he will cheat me. That's where you will be living a beautiful life. Before even that you are uh, envy and evil befall me, I must understand that you are planning this. This is possible only if I live in the abstractness. Criterion, criterion means the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. Criterion means the ability to distinguish between the right and the wrong. In Wait, so you say sometimes in something or in everything there is good and wrong. In everything there is good and wrong and we have to differentiate the two clearly and take the right and leave the wrong. You are a wrong and right person. I am able to distinguish what is wrong and what is right with you. I am tapping only the right and uh, I dismiss the wrong things in you. In every aspect of my thinking, there is right and wrong. I have to distinguish and let me tread in the path of righteousness and leave the path of error. In which of your uh, intentions, there is no right and wrong club together. That's the reason why Allah says, maintain patience. That will slowly make you, make you distinguish between right and wrong in your intentions and thoughts and actions and speeches. We are living in abstractness, but we think that we are living materially. Unless my mind is working, I have nothing to earn. Unless my mind plans, I have nothing to achieve. Let the planning be in the right direction, so that it is uh, long-lasting forever for you and your family. Which of these will you deny or question? You said sometimes there may be good in something, good in other things. And something may be wrong in one thing and wrong in other things. Both are existing in everything that you uh, consider. So I will not ask you whether you have seen this or not. Have you considered this or not? That's really the right question. Yes? Suppose if it is uh, less and there are more people, 
Yes, it is not right. Yeah. In all matters of like this is now we are uh, 30 or 40 people here. We are drinking for 30 and 40, 45 also there, 5 more is remaining. But the people are seeing millions. It will be disturbing to them. You are drinking tea and coffee and uh, they are left alone. It's an abstractness. So it is better not to eat or drink before the camera. After that, you can eat and drink. It is not good, no? I am eating and speaking. Will it be good for the person to whoever is hearing so seriously? So I will not be drinking. I will not be eating unless and until until such time my job is over. Forty people are there. Forty teas are there. I am drinking. It is good for anyone else who is seeing me in the abstractness, not materially. It is not good. I am not being serious about what I am saying. If I eat and drink and dance and speak. So even before coming, we set right our mind that our job is something else, not for eating and drinking. In everything there is good and bad, however greater you may be thinking, again there is good and bad, however greater you may be thinking beyond going further and further in your elevation, in status and ranking, in degree, definitely therein is also good and bad. So never be uh, satisfied about your status today, never be free from fear that you have done a good thing because there is an error lurking deeper inside and we also we always seek forgiveness from Allah we also seek uh, knowledge and wisdom from him and we seek patience from him and humility observance of humility is most important however great I may be you may be anyone may be observation of humili uh, humility is important be humble before others Buy something, you must know that the person will teach you. Yes. Uh, that's because my senses are not powerful to yes. understand that the person will teach me. Yes. If our senses are so good, things will come to you. I say, what for? What you have done? What have you been doing? The moment I set out and go and buy something, definitely someone is there to cheat me. And if I have the discerning ability, everything is uh, a cheating because. If I go and buy something that itself is uh, low in rank, that product itself is uh, of lower variety, where is the question of cheating? Of the best is giving, the best one is low in quality, what you will do? So he is honest now. What you may consider as cheating, cheater, he may be honest. It is not for you, it can be extinct, it can be removed. Pray to God now that it will be created all in you, or it will be originated all in you. Not a single tree is useful to you. They are useful for mosquitoes, not for you. But you mean that non bearing fruit tree is also is a part of the universe? It doesn't give it doesn't give smell to you, it doesn't give taste to you, it's a part of the universe to warn you as well as to punish you for what you are. If my heart is spacious, everything will turn out to be flowery, fruit-bearing, and nothing is uh, sourish, everything will be sweet. For our nature, this is what God has given. Even this shade will not be there in due course. And Tamil Nadu stands first in not having any shade, no tree, nothing. The moment you cross the border into uh, Bangalore or Kerala, full of greeneries. Then you will understand who Tamilians are, who the other people are around you. They don't even any care for, have any care for you. They don't even give you water even, even if you die. That's what you are before the eyes of Allah. Don't blame them. Blame yourself and seek forgiveness from Allah. All the three states will open up their water and the water will come from above also. Any more questions?
So Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, all glory be to Allah, the God of the worlds. This is the first, this is the scripture, this is from God, there is no way, if this is from God, there is no way to ask this question. So everybody who is having their own scriptures, let them see such a word is there. Straight away take off from this earth. Don't be a creeping snake on this earth. Lift yourself higher up. You start being elevated. Raised. You, you better be raised up today. Not rising up in the morning and lying down in the evening. This physical form is not what we are. Is the mental status is what you are aiming for a higher degree of development. So we are not uh, idle idols, we are not uh, materials. The only creation on this earth is non-material human being. Not material male and females. Today's language have not uh, uh, given uh, importance to the human being, but they give importance to male and female. But their uh, level has gone too low. Uh, God has created in a beautiful creation. Better than a butterfly. So softly you are created. So colorfully you are created. But you have reduced yourself to a creeping serpent. Walking on your stomach, bellies. Suggest some ways where you can always access this abstract. For example, I'm going to say later, listen to your talk. When you say there's no liveliness in that video, but it is leading towards abstractness. Can you use this as a tool to be in that state? state? I said, when you are uh, seeing this, it is uh, an image. But here it is lively, yeah. yes. But if you use your uh, questions instead of you, what is it I am speaking? And what is more to it than what I have spoken? That is the way you will be connecting yourself with the abstractness. Just not listening to the things that I have said or saying. Then I call it contemplation. Contemplation. What it could, what it is. What more could it be than whatever I have uttered? So that takes you to a higher level because this question is asked inside of you. God alone is going to reveal you and there is no shortage for the revelation of God on any own thing. No, no need to close your eyes. No need. No, 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 no. no. Your heart is already closed and it is having a different world. Your heart is in a different world already. You don't have to close your eyes now. Through the eyes only, I am appreciating you here. And through, through the heart only, I am able to see that still more uh, clarification is necessary for you, though you have not said it. Yes, you are already in the state. The moment you want, that is the wish given to the, uh, designed by the Almighty Power. Because you cannot ask this and you cannot wish this from anyone else as a human being or the human resources are not sufficient enough to provide you whatever you are wishing for. That is with godly source. You are already in the godliness because you wanted more than what is abstract and always keep in contact with the abstractness. Everything is there already in your heart about tomorrow. Everything is abstract. But you, you view it and you plan it to acquire it manually and materially. Wish for it. Everything will change. It will come to you what is otherwise a material, livelier. It will be lasting with you forever, come with you all the time, till your last breath, helping you. This is godliness. I am taking my food. Every food must be fresh. So this is what I want. I want food from you means 
all freshness and liveliness is attached. If I want to earn my food, I will earn my food and no one is necessary. I become needless. This is what my pride is. Then God is away. No liveliness is there. Whatever food you take will be detrimental to you. So living the, living the abstract and means always uh, keep the godliness in you. Whatever you wanted, oh God, save me from the evils of it. That's abstractness connected. Because you do not know what is evil and uh, you, you keep your, uh, your, your, your freshly cooked meal. You close it because you are preventing the flies from sitting on that. But only when you remove, you know whether it is a gutter or it is a foot. When the fly comes and sits there, the fly knows it is a gutter. But you think because it is uh, fresh and uh, white, you think all that glitters is gold and it is pure and you can consume it. No. This is abstractness. I know nothing is abstractness. I know everything is now. I have already hit the ground. Hitting the bucket itself is bad. Hitting the ground is even worse. What you know is nothing. What you want to know is everything. Now the abstractness is clear. Humility is abstractness. Humility being humbled before others in truth, not acting before others. In truth, I am humble because I, I have to learn more from Allah. All glory be to Him, the Lord of the worlds. Any questions? So, with the verse of Quran, we straight away are taking off from the earthy living beings, from the mundane beings. We stand elevated and stand as a model on the ground for other people to see you, value you and let them uplift their standards in this life. So first verse, ponder over it, think over it and before that Seek help from God. You reveal to me from where I have come come to, from the standpoint that now I am. Elevate me any further, further and further, and make me a humble personality before others. Let not at any point of time pride overtake me. If I have that pride within me, I will not be talking so much and I will, God will not reveal me so much. And there will not be any clarity, but full of confusions. Whatever I have told you, there is no confusion, no? There is something there. Let us think. So we will disperse now.